Okay, so a really ambitious topic to do in 10 minutes. If you take nothing else away from this, I want to convey the idea that despite what you may think, we're thinking of your typical sort of software architect sitting in his ivory tower, there is a systematic way to approach this. So the first uh, sort of observation I make is that every, every system has a software architecture, right? It might not be very good, but there is one there. And I guess the job of a software architect really is to make sure that the concerns of these guys are met. So these are the stakeholders. There are a number of different classes of stakeholders, um, quite, quite a few. So you, you think first often of the users, but also you've got to think about the acquirers, the people that are paying the money for the system, assessors, people that are going to decide if, if your software is, is meeting its requirements. You've got things like the developers that are going to build it, um, the operators that are going to maintain it, um, the people that are going to support it once it's running and, and, and uh, evolve it. But they have concerns that you have to, as an architect, decide if they're going to be met. And sometimes a lot of those concerns will be things in common. Like many of the stakeholders will want, for example, your solution to perform well. Right? But sometimes they're going to conflict. Maybe the requirements for security are going to drive down performance. Maybe the requirements of having high availability are going to drive up the cost. So there's always this tension in the stakeholders' needs that an architect has to balance. So if you think about what a, what a system is, what a software system is, you think about computers. You can generally classify the elements of those systems into sort of software, uh, data, which may be persistent or it may be eph eph ephemeral, and the hardware, the bits of network and so on. So the system is composed of these elements and they have relationships. And an architect thinks about how these elements relate together. And we need a kind of a model, a way to systematically evaluate the elements of the architecture. And one approach is to use this idea of, of views and viewpoints. So you can think of a viewpoint as a bit like a class. Right? Um, and the views are like instances of that class. So considering viewpoints, it gives us a set of templates for considering different aspects of an architecture. I remember um, interviewing once for a role of solution architect and the, the, the people interviewing me very excitedly told me that they had a diagram. They were very proud of that. The thought of one diagram being able to describe the architecture of anything is, is really sort of quite, quite beyond me. And what, what views bring to the table is a way of cutting across your architecture and looking at it, different aspects of that architecture so that you can convey the right information for the right audience that you're trying to communicate with. The consumer of an architectural description is the architect and a particular set of audience within your set, set of uh, your stakeholders forming an audience and they will have different concerns at different times. Sometimes there'll be developers, very technical. Other times there'll be business people that really care about the, the money, how much things are going to cost and when it's going to arrive, but don't want to be clouded by the technology. So you want to present things to them in different ways. So there's a number of views I'm going to run through here quickly. We'll start with the context. The context provides that overarching picture of where your solution, where your solution fits into, into the scheme of things. This is the place where you model what are the external dependencies of your system? Who are the users of your system that interact with it? If you have a dependency on some third-party service or on a cloud provider, this is a good place to express that dependency. Then I'm going to group the next three together. So we'll start with, with functional. This is often where people go first when they're looking into an architectural description. It tells you what the system provides for you. In here, you'll often find um, things like class diagrams that will describe what are the elements of your system and, and how do they relate. You'll define things like uh, activity diagrams which show the runtime dynamics of a solution. But this is where you find out what, what, does, this, what does this architecture do for you. The next viewpoint is information. Information will convey what is the data that your system stores. What are the schemas? How does, it, how, how, how does the information um, get persisted? How does it evolve over time? What are the flows of information through a system? Next view is concurrency. Um, systems have static state, um, but when it comes to runtime, they have this more dynamic state, and they are not the same thing. You might have a model which shows, for example, a client talking to your server, 
that's a static view of things. When it comes to runtime, you need to think about, well, how did that client come into being? Uh, when did the browser get fired up and somebody log in? So you can have two models covering the same aspects of your architecture, looking at it in a, in a very different way. These three pieces together form the organization of your system. The development view is where developers will spend most of their time. So in the development view, we're looking at things like how should modules be com composed? We're looking and thinking about cross-cutting concerns, like particular design patterns you might use, particular architectural styles. The development view is a good place to, to express those. Another deployment view, how does your system get built and released, get into its environment? And related to that, these two uh, covering the production view of your system. Deployment and operational views together are how you manage the system once it hits live. So operational will be covering things like how do we know the system's working? How do we log and monitor the system and understand what it's doing for us? So these seven views together give us a way of slicing up our, our architecture and looking at it in, in different ways. But across all of that, we have perspectives sometimes called the non-functional requirements or the illities. I'm going to go through the four most important ones of these. Um, security. So security, often, often the number one most important aspect of a system, whether you, whether you like it or not, sometimes considered retrospectively. Um, if you think about this, a perspective can be applied to all of the views and it manifests in different ways. So in the functional view, maybe we need to have users log in and authenticate. Security in an application needs to be often in unobtrusive, um, but it needs to carry out a very important role of you know, identifying who's using our system and making sure they can do the right thing. If we think about security in the information view, perhaps we need to think about our data um, and, and how we access it and giving maybe fine-grained access to the objects that make up of our, our information view. If you think about the operational view, perhaps with security we're thinking about, am I, can I be protected against a denial of service attack? Performance and scalability, another very key illity. Will our system run fast enough and scale in the right way? Availability, is it going to keep on running when things go wrong? How do we deal with disaster recovery? How do we deal with, with backup and failing over in the event of things not working? Have we designed to expect failure within our system? And then finally, evolution. How are we going to maintain and grow our solution over time? So each of these perspectives provides us with a template, a set of tactics, a set of checklists that we can run through each of our views to see if the, those big questions have been addressed. There are many, many more of these illities. This is the list off of the Wikipedia page. And it depends on your solution, your system, and your concerns of your stakeholders, which are important. For some solutions, accessibility will be significantly more important than in others. Sometimes compliance is something that's really important. Are you adhering to all the regulations of your, your, your particular solution? So you need to look through all of these and consider what are the important perspectives that you need to apply to your particular solution. So here is the architecture of architecture. Um, this is a really nice sort of model that I stole completely from a book called uh, Software System Architecture, and I'll, I'll provide a link to that. But here you can see how all of these aspects relate together. So we can see that our architecture is comprised of elements and their relationships, and that we're saying here a system has an architecture, and that an architecture can be documented by one or more architectural descriptions, which are composed of views, which conform to viewpoints, which address the concerns of our many stakeholders, and that each view can be shaped by any number of perspectives that we give it. And within all of this, we have the architect who is creating and owning these architectural descriptions, capturing the concerns of stakeholders, following an architecture definition and process so that he can design an architecture. And in a nutshell, that's kind of what the software architect does. <laughs> Thank you.